Good morning. Hi, how are we doing today? It is Monday morning. It is March 15th. My sister's birthday, by the way, I'm going to give her a shout out, even though she doesn't watch because she's not on Facebook. Uh, but I do want to uh, wish her a happy birthday. And I just want to say good morning to all of you. And thank you for joining me for another Monday morning mojo session. I um, really appreciate that you start your week with me. I couldn't be more honored and blessed by that. So I hope you've all had a great week and that you're excited to uh, start your day and uh, this conversation. And <clears throat> what I wanted to uh, talk about today is the fact that we began a journey a year ago. Uh, and I can remember a year ago today, um, it would have been a Sunday and uh, I had decided, well, we had decided uh, at Keller Williams with my business partner that it would be uh, prudent for us to work from home and for everyone to do so. And so I packed up my stuff and uh, with the expectation to work from home for two weeks, uh, started that process only to find out quickly how two weeks would turn into uh, 12 months. And so it's just uh, recently I've started going back into the offices and we, uh, we opened our offices slowly over uh, last summer. And so it's, it's definitely been, 2020 was a year like no other. And I think we all know that. And it was a year that we really couldn't have prepared for. And um, I think in this past year, we've learned a lot. I would like to think we've learned a lot. And I think that we've seen a lot. Um, I believe that with a year as 2020 was, with so much um, happening uh, in that year, not just COVID, uh, that it came to teach us something. And I believe if we move forward without those lessons, then we're missing a big opportunity. So I thought it would be a good conversation this morning and, and really more than just a conversation to give all of us something to think about and something to work on uh, throughout this week and, and over the next several weeks that is really about moving forward and how we want to take these lessons and observations about ourselves, about the world we live in and how we wanna go forward. And, and I'm gonna share with you some small but really impactful ways that you can do that. And I think I wanna have a conversation around resilience too, um, because for a lot of us, uh, or some of us that that word may not have been in our vocabulary as often, right? Tenacious, resilient. And for some of you, I wonder if you knew you had such resilience and tenacity. Uh, and 2020 was able to show you a lot about that. And so um, I would love for you guys to be interactive with me this morning. If you're watching on Facebook, good morning again. Uh, please feel free to use the uh, comments on the thread because I do pay attention. And I would love to know um, from you right now, and if anyone on Zoom would like to share, um, if you can remember what you were thinking a year ago today, when you heard about this, this pandemic, this virus really affecting all of us, and we prepared to shelter in place, remember those words, and uh, work from home, and, and uh, schools were closed, and we thought, again, it was going to be a couple weeks. Uh, so if you're if you're on Facebook, use uh, use the comments. If you're here on Zoom, I'd love to hear from you. What were you thinking then, Michelle? Hi, good morning. So I had lost my job right before this started, and I had already been home. But what for me, what it was affecting was my networking, going down into the city because I worked in the city and being able to you know, just connect with old colleagues and et cetera. And at first, we were kind of like you know, do we, do we go ahead and meet? Do we not meet? Is it yeah, confusing, right? Yeah. Nobody kind of really knew what to do. Half of people thought the other half were being too like, um, over, over the top. Yeah, over cautious, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I remember thinking. And I certainly didn't think we'd be here a year later, kind of not in the same boat. I definitely think we're better today, but, um, it's not, it's our new normal, I guess. It's not, yeah. I don't know that it'll ever go back. Well, and that's something else to talk about this morning too. You know, is it really a new normal or, you know, is it just us moving forward? I don't believe we're ever going back to the way things were in many ways because we can't. No. Once you know something, you can't unknow it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and uh, believe me, I am not putting a negative spin on this. I'm just saying that 
we've been changed by this. And I think in a lot of ways for the better. And, and so we just have to embrace change and know that when change occurs, you're always going to move forward in a different way. So you can't really go back to the way things were. And maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. I appreciate the comments on Facebook. I see Lisa Marie wrote um, that she was full of fear and uncertainty. And I know a lot of us can relate to that, right? Because we had never seen anything like this before. And uh, she went on to say she really relied on her faith. Um, and that's one thing I, I think a lot of us uh, could take a look at that, that really I, I feel was a result of this past year was, you know, were you able to really connect more with your faith? Were you able to really, whether, you know, it's a higher power, God, your spirituality, or really just also the faith in yourself, right? Which we've talked a lot about here on, on Mojo, you know, were you able to, and hopefully continue to develop that, that belief in yourself that you can figure it out, that you can navigate challenging times, uh, even if you've never been through it before, what have you learned about yourself? And so if you can also, you know, jump in here or on Facebook and, and uh, tell me, what did you learn about yourself in this past year? Um, Fred said on Facebook, he was wondering how serious the pandemic was going to be. Yeah, because again, we never knew this type of, of thing before. And, and, you know, I want to honor and reflect on all the lives that have been lost. Uh, I have family members that we lost to COVID myself, and I wonder if any of us are untouched by that. So I honor that, and yet I can say with gratitude that I want to celebrate the fact that we're here, right? And I want to celebrate the fact that we're here because we we have survived something. We're resilient, and we were able to to really you know continue to go through this. Um, and so that's huge, right? So take a moment and celebrate that. Um, yes. And Robin said she learned that you can thrive while surviving. Yes. I love that. That's great. Um, so what have we learned about ourselves? That's what I want you to think about right now. And that could be a great journal prompt. What have we learned about ourselves in this past year? I think that, um, a lot of us, uh, experienced, uh, things changing quickly around us. I think that we learned more about ourselves, right? What are your strengths? What did you learn about the way that you uh, cope, right? We've, we had to figure out coping mechanisms. I think a lot of us learned things about our own emotions, right? And we learned a lot of things about mindset. Uh, even if we didn't know that's what we called it, that is what we were, we were experiencing. Um, yeah, Pam, uh, excuse me, um, Ruby wrote on uh, Facebook, it was scary to know that this could be the end for many people. And she prayed for her family to be safe, yeah. For sure. And so did we learn the value of family? Did we learn more about the value of the human connection, about our friends? And, and you know, there's so much packed in that, right? Because we were separated from each other. And, you know, that old saying, you don't know what you've had until it's gone. Uh, and it was really weird. And I remember um, Easter last year, it was just me and my husband. We were not with my kids. We were not with my parents or my mother-in-law or anyone else. And um, it was it was so different because every every year of my life until last April, uh, holidays were big, big celebrations. Growing up, it was aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents, and you know, forty people for Christmas dinner was was nothing. And uh, so it was, it was weird. And, and really, did you come to learn the value of our relationships? And did we have to pivot and shift to figure out ways to stay connected, right? So I, I just say applaud ourselves for that. Uh, and Zoom, right? Who never, who never heard of Zoom before? And now it's, it's our way of life. And grateful for that as well. So, so many things, you know, came through this past year. But I think the other thing is the exposure, the exposure to ourselves, our character, the exposure, our, or just our nerves, right? Because again, it wasn't just COVID. We started to see things really hit uh, unprecedented highs in social uh, justice, in, in the economy, in the government. And again, so much being packed into one year, what is the universe trying to tell us? 
Have you thought about that before? I'm curious if I was to ask you to think about that question. What is the universe trying to tell us? And um, Robin said, we learned to slow down and see what was really around us for sure. You know, our eyes were more open to see the beauty and the pain, to see the injustice and to see the opportunities. Uh, and it was such a contrast and continues to be if you know what you're looking for, right? And we've talked about that here before too. Whatever you, you look for, you will find. Um, and so I think the other thing uh, for me that came out of this past year was I learned the importance of some alone time. I learned the importance of slowing down. And I learned the importance of creating new priorities in my time, right? So how many of you can relate to that? And yet, does it have to change? Does it have to stop? Can we continue to bring those lessons forward, right? So, so how are how has that changed for you? How are you more mindful about where you spend your time, how you spend your time, and who you spend your time with, right? So that definitely was something that I experienced in this past year. Um, and Michelle touched on the other thing. You know, we were limited in our movement. We were limited in the networking and the people we could talk to. Um, and so the way we did business changed. Uh, and so for many of us, you know, we had to make a decision. So we, we had to decide was, was our business going to uh, survive this or not. And for, for many small businesses, I'm afraid it didn't. And, I, and my heart goes out to them. And yet I hope that they have found or are in the process of finding a way to reinvent themselves. Because we've all experienced loss, we've all experienced tragedy. And so, you know, I've worked with a lot of small businesses that have had to reinvent themselves and pivot and, and reshape what they're doing. And that's the opportunity. So if what you were doing is, is now not relevant or too difficult to do because of where we are, uh, then what else can, can spring up from this? What can you birth as a result of this? Because there are transferable skills and there are great talents and gifts that you have that now you can use in some other way. And, um, and so that's important too. And yet many of our businesses have thrived. Many of our businesses saw incredible success and opportunity because of the landscape of 2020. Michelle, you had something to say. Yeah, I think that for a lot of people, and this is myself included, but it could be a business or a, a personal thing, is that, you know, I had the same career. I worked for the same company for 26 years. Wow. I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't, I, I didn't know how to pivot. And I think that a lot of people, a lot of successful people or businesses, they just you know, went about their business every day and didn't never thought like I would have to, I have a successful business. Why do I have to have a backup plan or, or mm -hmm. think about change? And I think that now it's part of people's mindset and conversations that you have to be prepared for the unexpected. That is well said. And I think that that's something if you're writing things down that you want to take action on, because that's what Mojo is about. It's always about let's think of the, these these concepts that we can put into action in our work and our life. And so are you prepared for change when it shows up, even if you can't predict the change itself and how it's going to show up? Here is one thing you can be sure of, my friends. Change is inevitable. Right. The world is constantly changing around us and and we as well. Uh, and so are you prepared for change? And how do you prepare for change? I think it starts with mindset, right? You have to have that, that, that core belief that whatever it is, you can figure it out. Even if you need help, even if you need more information or, or uh, support or tools and resources, that's fine. But you, you need to have that belief that you can figure it out. Uh, the other way is, is to be ready for change, right? You have to know how to shift and pivot. And, and be willing to let go of what was, right? And that's the other thing about moving forward right now and why I say things are never the same or gonna be the same. We have to be willing to move forward in a different way. And we have to be willing to let go in order to move forward with the let go of what was, right? And can we be excited? Can we be excited about what's to come, right? Because I think that's another thing that 2020 has taught some of us, or I hope that it has taught many of you, um, is, is not, 
even though it's scary and we've been through a lot of really you know tough stuff and and seen some some terrible images of people suffering can we also know that good things are coming our way can we also expect blessings rather than burdens and and that's again that faith and that resilient mindset and um and so you know embracing change helps us navigate what's coming right just knowing that we are in a in this place to to say okay well it's going to be different i'm going to let go of what was i'm going to figure out what it is and so when we have that kind of like what michelle was saying that plan or we know that in our personal lives things may change in our business things may change our relationships can change you know how do we move forward from there right and so i've talked a little bit about resilience this morning um and I think that resilience um, it is such a strong character uh, characteristic for, for ourselves to look at. I think that um, when you think about that term resilience, it's basically knowing that you can cope with what comes, right? It's that you can cope with what comes. And um, according to, to psychologists, I mean, globally, that's one of the key factors of staying healthy, mentally healthy, and for coping is this resilience. And so um, it's hard to define in a way, because I think, uh, you know, you could say it's kind of like having grit, tenacity, a willingness to thrive. Uh, some people might say it's about being a little tough. But I think at the end of the day, I think about it as like the ball that bounces back, right? So you throw the ball down, but it bounces back. That's what I think of when I think of resilience, my own definition. Um, and so what, what does that mean to you? It means that no matter what life throws at you, it's not to say you won't be affected. It is not, it is not to say, okay, you have to have that stiff upper lip and just keep moving. No, 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 no. I, I mean, it's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel insecurity. It's okay to have some doubt. My, my coaching to you on that would be, it's just not okay to stay there, right? It's okay to feel it. Now let's figure out how to move forward and work through those feelings. What, is, what are those feelings teaching us or showing us? And how are we going to really bring up that belief that we can figure this out? And that's where resilience starts to show up, right? So that's that's really that, that feeling of resilience. And so um, here are a couple of small ways you can cultivate resilience. And then before our time is out this morning, I wanna ask you, what is your post COVID bucket list, right? Because part of being resilient is knowing that we're moving forward and looking forward with hope and optimism. And so as we move through these next few months, vaccines are coming out. Uh, I don't believe this virus is, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, my disclaimer. I don't believe this virus is really going away, but I do think we're going to learn to manage it differently and hopefully see that, you know, uh, we have uh, people who are recovering a little quicker because of it and not losing our, our loved ones to that. Uh, but I do believe that as things start to change in the next several months and we see that, you know, some of these restrictions are lowered, I just want to ask you, what is your post-COVID bucket list? What is on the list? I see Robin wrote she wants to hug people. I like that. And I totally get that. Is it about traveling? Uh, is it about enjoying uh, a conversation over a cup of coffee or a glass of wine with someone you haven't seen, right? So, you know, what is it that you want to do post-COVID? I want you to think about that. Um, so my, my few tips here on being resilient I think if you're looking to create that inner strength, if you're looking to create that mental fortitude, right? If you wanna develop the ability to meet challenges and, and navigate tough things and allow yourself to move through emotions uh, and so that you can figure it out, then this would be important for you to, to develop resilience. And the first thing I would say is really examine your, your network of support. And even though we saw our movements limited and we had to be physically distant in 2020, I don't know if we had to be socially distant, right? We still have the phone, we still have the technology available to us. And I think it's important that 
that you recognize who is in that circle of support, right? Who are your closest family and friends that really can be someone that you can lean on, right? And I think it's also important that, and we've talked about this before, you know, making sure that that group is not going to bring you down mentally, but is going to help you be realistic and, and lift you up when needed to. Um, and so that is really important is for us to look at, you know, who's in our inner circle? Who's in our inner circle personally, professionally, that we can lean on for support, for guidance, uh, so that we can develop that, that, you know, tenacity and resilience. I think another thing that we've talked a lot about here on Mojo is self-care. And I always say self-care is so much more than just a long bubble bath, right? Self-care is about the way we talk to ourselves. Self-care is about the way that we think. It's about setting boundaries. It's about, you know, how we make decisions, how we set goals for ourselves, how we make time for our spiritual life, our physical health, our wellness, exercise, eating right, what we put in our bodies, you know, so there's a lot packed into self-care. And I think that when you put yourself first, that is not being selfish, that is just being focused on self. And sometimes during tough times, self-preservation is really important. Would you agree? And if we can't take care of ourselves, can we take care of others in our lives, right? Are we going to be there for everyone else? And if we don't have the focus on self-care, will we have the mental sharpness and fortitude to be able to manage our emotions and really make the decisions that need to be made, right? So I think that's important. Another way that you can become more resilient is managing your emotions, right? Understanding that, uh, again, feelings, come from our thoughts. And so if we look at the way that we're thinking, can we change the way that we feel? Right? And so managing our emotions is important. Uh, and so in that, packed in that, I would say, uh, seek out happiness, seek out ways to just unwind, release the steam valve sometimes, find ways to laugh, find ways to bring joy. Because even in the darkest of times, even in the most challenging of times, there, there is always something to be grateful for if we look for that. And I think that the more we practice gratitude, our vibration is, is at the highest level possible when you express gratitude. And so that opens our, our, ourselves up to so many blessings and opportunities. Um, and so another way to, to build your resilience is to really focus your time and energy on the things that matter most. So it's really getting clear about what your priorities need to be and of course, we saw priority shift in 2020, right? And maybe that's a great opportunity and a blessing going forward is that we have a new understanding of priorities. And so uh, when you spend time on things that you find meaningful, that does so much for our thoughts, our emotions. It brings us fulfillment and it, it does give us an opportunity to express more gratitude. And, and probably brings a level of calm and peace into our world too, which is important when navigating difficult times. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, so I think that's a big one too. Um, and I have to say the other thing about being resilient is not about being a machine. This is not about just pushing and, and being a warrior all the time. Be like, no, 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 I gotta keep moving forward. No, you're still connected to your thoughts and feelings. It's just an opportunity to, to manage it better. Uh, but I think that when you push through stuff, you're choosing to ignore some things along the way. That doesn't help you to become more resilient. I think the resilience comes from understanding and breaking down and processing what's happening around you. So I just want to say it's not about um, just charging through a problem. And it's also not about pushing yourself to the point of exhaustion either. That's not self-care, right? So that's important to mention uh, in this conversation too. Um, and and then I would say another part of resilience that I've touched on is, you know, really understanding how powerful your thoughts are, right? So managing our thoughts, moving out of those negative thoughts into something much more positive. And my hope and prayer is that over these last uh, several months, as we come into 
uh, almost a year of doing Mojo ourselves here, that the content that we've shared here, the conversations that we've had, have all led to you becoming more resilient. I mean, that's really, you know, when I when I think about the list I have here, a, a lot of our topics have touched on that. So my prayer is that, you know, you found the opportunity through a group like this to do that. So what are your thoughts? Share them with me here, share them with me on the Facebook. I love when uh, you can do that. Uh, I'm reading all your comments and um, Liz says what we focus on expands. So true, very true. And uh, the, other, the other thing that I want you to think about this week is your post COVID bucket list. What are some things that you're going to start doing even today with optimism and faith about how we're moving forward in big ways? And you know, what, what does that look like for you? So Sarah, I see you have a hand raised. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm good. I'm well, thank you. Very um, uh, appreciative to be here. I'm glad um, to be here too. My, uh, my yoga teacher, um, who is really amazing, really, really amazing, um, had, a, had something that had so much resonance for me one class, and that was um, deal with what is. Deal with what is, yes. Um, not what was or not what you want necessarily, but, but with what is. And I think if you can stay present with that, um, that can be really challenging some days, but, uh, but really important. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That is um, a key concept too, because I often say uh, to, to people I, um, I'm coaching or consulting, right? We can't drive a car looking behind us, right? We drive the car by looking forward. And while we're driving the car, Think about it, how, how much your brain is working to, to support you in that process, right? Because you're driving the car, you're aware of what's going on with the car, your navigation and everything. And, and then we're looking at, at the path in front of us or the lane we're driving. And while we're kind of aware of a lot of stuff happening around us at the same time. And so I think life is, is the same, right? It's a great metaphor for life. If, if we're always looking behind us, we're missing you know, what's in front of us and we may crash. And, um, and, and sometimes we'll miss the exit too, right? If we're not paying attention mm -hmm. and life is full of exits and, and, and on ramps. And we have to just know when it's time to get off and when it's time to get back on that particular journey or highway, uh, or when it's time to just take a detour. And so when we focus a lot of our energy in the past, uh, oftentimes we can get, um, sad, even depressed, because it's it, we, we tend to focus on what was and what we don't have, and we, sent, we feel like lack. And when we focus too much time uh, or too much energy on what's in front of us, uh, and this is different than vision, planning, and goal setting, but when we start to like worry about what's going to happen in front of us that we really have no clue if, if it's true or not, uh, that creates anxiety. But when we focus our time and energy on what's right here, the present moment, what's right in front of us, that's all we have anyway, right? Because honestly, what you do today is shaping tomorrow. So all you have is right now. So that's your focus is to make today the most amazing, productive, uh, results-oriented day that you can. Like if you're focused on, you know, I share with you, I'm working on uh, my, my weight loss. So I just focus on one meal at a time. If I get this meal right, and then the next meal I get right, and then the next, you know, it's a compound effect. So what is it that you need to do today? Write that down. What do I need to do today to make today a great day, to make today productive? What are the top two or three things I have to accomplish today that line up with my priorities that will, that will make today successful? and then repeat it tomorrow. So thank you for sharing that, Sarah, because that is so very true. And I, I think at the end of the day, all of this is about being kind to ourselves, right? And yes. if 2020 taught us anything, it's to be kind to ourselves because we're doing the best we can. <laughs> now, can we learn more to do more and to be better each time? Of course, but at any given moment, we're just doing the best that we can. So give yourself a break and say, you're doing, you're doing good. You're doing great. And I would just like to add, um, I think uh, to stay focused on 
uh, what the positive things that um, COVID brought us. And for me, that was, I, I took advantage of so many opportunities, both personally and professionally uh, to do Zoom meetings that I never, you know, that I never would have been able to physically attend. Yeah. Um, and learned so much. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think again, like Liz said on Facebook, what you focus on expands, right? You can focus on all the negatives or you can focus on all the opportunities, right? So I think 2020 showed us that as well. Michelle, you have a hand up still or is that from before? Sorry, that was from before. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I just wanna make sure everyone has an opportunity to be seen and heard here. So, um, so again, to wrap up this morning, you know, what is your, um, biggest lesson from 2020, or, you know, if you want to start out by writing down a few thoughts and then decide like, what is the biggest lesson you've taken away from 2020 that you want to bring forward into 2021, right? Because again, what we focus on expands, we can focus on a lot of the tragedies, uh, and yet not really look at the opportunities that those tragedies maybe have brought to us too. You know, how have we learned? How have we become better? How have we become more open, more sensitive? Uh, how have we become smarter? How have we become more resilient? Uh, how have we become more compassionate people? And so, you know, what are your greatest lessons going forward? And, and really more importantly, how will you use them now in 2021 and going forward, right? And then what are some of the things you're looking forward to? Because always having a sense of anticipation around things to look forward to uh, can do a lot to keep you on track today, right? So what are some of the things you're looking forward to? So one of my greatest blessings in 2020 is you guys, right? Being inspired to start this group and to get on here every Monday and come up with a new and hopefully relevant topic for you has been a blessing and an opportunity for me. Uh, it has kept me focused and sharp for uh, what the conversation needs to look like. Uh, it's, it's allowed me to continue to be an avid learner, right? So that I always have some new things to talk to you about. So I think, you know, that's a great opportunity and blessing for me. And I thank you for that. And so thank you for being with me every Monday morning and uh, for watching and being a part of the group. Please continue to put your comments on Facebook, share your aha, share your win, share your struggles, because, you know, it's a community of people that can support each other, not just um, me uh, providing, you know, information. I think all of us have the ability to teach and all of us have the ability to inspire. We just have to reach out and to touch even just one person. And so on that note, if you find this to be helpful and valuable, uh, do something today to pay that forward. Invite one person to like the Facebook group and to join us on, on the next Mojo session. So thank you again. Have an awesome day. I love you all. And I will see you here next Monday. Thanks, Anna. Have a great Thanks, week. Anna. Have Thanks. a great day, everybody. Take care. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.